How the UN is holding back the Sahara Desert Did you know that the Sahara Desert, one of the hottest, driest, and largest deserts on Earth, is expanding? Stretching across 10 countries and spanning an incredible 3,000 miles, this vast desert is now growing even larger, increasing by a whopping 10%. Its reach has extended to cover a staggering 3.5 million square miles. But why is this happening? Let's delve into the reasons behind this remarkable phenomenon. In 2007, African countries agreed on something called the African Union Declaration 1378. It's about making a big wall of trees across Africa, from Senegal to Djibouti, and from the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean. This wall, called the Great Green Wall, will be super huge. It's going to be 10 miles wide and 4,350 miles long. It'll go through many countries like Senegal, Nigeria, Sudan, and more. The goal is to fix 100 million hectares of damaged land by 2030, take out 250 million tons of carbon dioxide, and make 10 million jobs. The Great Green Wall is not just about trees, it's also a sign of hope for making Africa better by stopping desert spreading and helping the environment. The aim of the Great Green Wall project is to combat desertification and land degradation in the Sahel region of Africa by creating a barrier of trees and vegetation stretching across the continent. This massive living structure is intended to hold the advancement of the Sahara Desert and restore degraded land, thereby promoting sustainable development preserving biodiversity, and improving the livelihoods of millions of people living in the region. Additionally, the project aims to mitigate the impact of climate change by restoring ecosystems, increasing carbon sequestration, and enhancing resilience to extreme weather events. Now, the Great Green Wall project is focusing more on smart farming instead of just planting trees everywhere. This change aims to fight desert spreading and help farming in a better way. The project has had some problems and didn't work as well as hoped. Planting trees was easy, but many didn't survive because they weren't taken care of properly. Also, it needed a lot of people to plant and look after the trees, which wasn't possible because it was such a big project. This process can make the land better for farming, like in China's Gobi Desert. So, even though there were problems, there's still hope for the Great Green Wall project, especially because the Sahara Desert is starting to change and become more suitable for making it greener. Time is running out because the population in the Sahel is going to get much bigger by 2050. If the land stays the same, there could be big problems, like lots of people moving away and needing help. But there's good news too. The Great Green Wall project is starting to work better. At first, people didn't think it would help because the land was so damaged. But now, more and more people are getting involved, and they're learning how to take care of the land better. The World Food Programme has been a big part of this, helping to fix up about 300,000 hectares of land. This is a big step towards making the Great Green Wall. To fix the land, they start by making the hard ground softer so plants can grow. They build things like half moons to keep water where it's needed, helping plants grow. Each day, one person can dig a 4-meter diameter half moon. In one place, a group of 150 people dug 7,500 half moons, which kick-started the process of fixing the soil. A big part of the Great Green Wall project is getting local communities involved. When people in the area help plan and do the work, it makes sure the project lasts and people feel like it's theirs. This has helped get more support for the project, even from people who were doubtful at first. The focus of the restoration effort lies in planting the versatile gum arabic tree, considered a champion of restoration. This tree serves as an ideal pioneer species, capable of producing resins, pasta, and firewood, while fixing atmospheric nitrogen and tolerating periods of extreme water stress. To maximize the tree's success, the village employs the water harvesting technique known as half moons or boons. By teaching people how to farm better and saving different kinds of plants and animals, the project wants to help the environment and make life better for people living there. The half moon method is simple, but it really works. Here's how. First, the half moons are put along the land's natural slope. When it rains, the water goes into the half moons because they're lower than the surrounding land. The half moon stopped the water from going away and let the soil soak it up. 
The half moon method keeps water in the ground and helps plants grow. They put organic stuff in the half moons to make the soil better. They plant local plants like sorghum and millet, which are good for the area. This helps because these plants are used to the local weather and can grow well. The half moons also help fill up the underground water, so there's always enough water around. Another way they fix the land is by making lines where they grow different kinds of plants. They grow vegetables in sunbeds and put trees in trenches. The World Food Program is helping them learn how to grow vegetables all year round so they can stay and work. Additionally, the WFP promotes community-based forestry management approaches, empowering local communities to take ownership of reforestation efforts and ensuring the sustainability of tree planting initiatives over the long term. Through these reforestation efforts, the WFP contributes to reversing the trend of desertification in the Sahara Desert region and restoring biodiversity, ecosystem services, and livelihood opportunities for local communities. The restoration of 5 million hectares of land not only benefits local communities by providing them with improved access to resources and opportunities, but also contributes to broader environmental objectives. By increasing vegetation cover and restoring ecosystems, the project enhances carbon sequestration, helping to mitigate the impacts of greenhouse gas emissions on the global climate. Additionally, the restoration of degraded land contributes to biodiversity conservation, supporting the survival of plant and animal species in the region. Furthermore, the Great Green Wall Project represents a holistic approach to addressing environmental challenges by combining restoration efforts with community engagement and sustainable development initiatives. Through partnerships with local communities, governments and international organizations, the project aims to empower communities to take ownership of their natural resources and build resilience to climate change. If you want to know more about this project, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for updates. See you next time.